Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com, and today we're going to continue learning about Java. Here we're going to install the Java Development Kit, including the compiler and the uh, run, everything needed to run the programs. We'll show you how to set your system up. I did give you the link before, but really if you just go to Google and type in Java Development Kit, you can see there's the top hit right there, Java Development Kit. The very first link, uh, Java Downloads, it's an Oracle website. So if you go here, uh, then you are presented with the ability to download stuff. Now, there's a lot of different options here. You know, there are lots of different uh, other parts of Java that we haven't talked about. There's Java Enterprise Edition, Java Embedded, there's other things. What you need is just the regular Java platform, which is the link right here. So if you click this guy right here, then you will be brought to a page where you'll have to accept the license agreement, and you'll need to choose whatever operating system you are running on. Uh, so what you need to do, go down here, for instance, I'm on Windows uh, 64 because I have a 64-bit processor, and so then I'll click this guy and download it, and whenever I download it, what I'm going to have is this file right here, uh, JDK, that's Java Development Kit, this is the version number, this is Windows 64-bit, there you go. Now I've already installed this, but what you're going to end up doing is double-clicking the files, uh, and it's going to tell me the software's already been installed. Would I like to reinstall it? In this case, I'm not going to reinstall it. Basically, it's going to ask you where would you like to put it, just like any program. You just follow the prompts, and then it's going to be installed. Now, let me show you where it, it installed in my system. You can put it anywhere you want, but if I go to Program Files, there's going to be a Java uh, folder here that's created. So if you go into here, uh, notice it says JDK 1.7... 0 underscore 21. This is what you want. This is the Java development kit. So let's go and take a look at this. There's lots of stuff in here. There's readme files. There's lots of folders. What you want is the bin folder, which is the binary folder. And I'm mostly just showing you what's in here so you know. There's lots and lots and lots of things in here. These are all sort of supporting files and executables for the Java environment. The most important ones, really the only ones you need to know right now, is this one right here, Java C. Java C. Remember that. That is the Java compiler. Remember we said that we're going to take a file, we're going to compile it, and then the output of that is going to be a class file that we can run. Java C here is the actual program that compiles it. Right? And then we also said we need to run the program, right? So we run it in this program here called Java. So whenever we run it, we have to type Java, and then we put a space, and then we have the name of the class file that we're going to run, and this guy looks in there and runs the program. So these two files, Java C and Java, are really the most important parts of what we have here. These are the things we're going to be using here in the beginning. Uh, uh, here. So what I want you to do next is, you see, we're going to be in the beginning here, I'm going to be showing you how to compile a really simple program from the command line because I want to show you how really Java is all about taking a text file and just compiling it, getting in a class file, and running it. I don't want to introduce the integrated development environment for another lesson or two because I want you to understand sort of what we're doing in the background. It's important to know what's happening behind the scenes. So we're going to literally be typing Java. C space something in order to compile the program and then we're going to be running it uh, using the command line as well. So because of that we're going to be using these two programs Java C and Java a lot and we want to be able to run these programs from any directory in your system. So this directory here C colon program files Java JDK blah 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 slash bin this folder this directory on my computer is very important we want to make it available to all no matter where I'm at in my operating system. We want to make it available everywhere. So what you need to do to pull that off is to go up to the very end of the directory where it says bin, right click on it and say it says copy address. This is copying the directory to the clipboard and if you want to see what it is just fire up notepad and paste it in there and it's c colon program files java slash all this stuff slash bin. Inside of here is the compiler and uh, the virtual machine that we need to run the programs. Um, now in your computer, you may have installed it in a different location, so this directory might look a little bit different, but anyway, this is the uh, directory that we want to be accessible from anywhere in my computer. So in other uh, words, the way we want to, to make that happen is we want to um, uh, edit the path 
in the path of the system. We want to add this directory to the system path. So in order to do that, just go to your control panel and then go to system and then go to advanced system settings. And when you get here, go to environment variables. One of these environment variables is called path, right? Hit edit. Basically, I want to go to the, there's a lot of different directories in here. These are all uh, directories or folders on my computer that really the system needs to access from anywhere. And so I'm going to go to the very end of the list. Notice I just hit the right arrow key until I'm at the end. You put a semicolon in place, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste in that folder that we have, and I'm going to put another semicolon at the end. So all I did was go to edit the system path. I went to the end. I put a semicolon. I pasted in this important directory that contains the Java compiler, and I put a semicolon at the end of that, and I hit OK to have it accept that, and I hit OK to have it accept that, and OK to have it accept that, and I'm going to kill that screen, and I'm going to minimize this. Now, why did we do that? Because what I can do now, I can go to any directory I want, so I can go to the desktop, for instance, CD desktop, All right, so this is the desktop that has, you know, a couple of folders in it. Now, the Java C program is the Java compiler. So in order to make sure that everything's working right, I can type Java C space dash version. And what's going to come up is it's going to tell me I'm running Java compiler version 1.7.0 underscore 21. I can also check the other program that we're going to use to run our Java programs called Java and I can check the version to make sure that it works. And it says Java version 1.7.0 underscore 21, Java runtime environment, 64-bit server, blah, blah, blah. Basically, no matter what directory I'm in on my computer, I can be working in any folder I want. If I type in Java and I try, try to run a Java program, which I'm going to end up using this application called Java, that's what we're going to use to run our Java programs, it's accessible everywhere so I can run my programs from everywhere. If I try to compile a program by running the Java C program then I can do that from anywhere as well. So that's all we want to talk about now. I want you to go download the Java development kit, um, double click it, install it, go verify where it put it in there, and go check out the, the bin directory, the, the BIN directory, make sure that the Java C file is there, the Java file is there, and then you want to make those accessible everywhere. So go and edit your system path the way I showed, showed you. Take that folder that contains those programs, wherever you put it on your computer, paste it at the end with semicolons so that you can you know, put it at the very end of the list so that directory is accessible everywhere. And then no matter what folder you're in on your computer, you should be able to access the Java C file, which is a Java compiler, and also the Java file, which we're going to use to run our programs. Now, finally, after having all this set up, follow me on to the next section. We're finally going to type in our first Java program and use the Java C file to compile it, and then also the Java uh, runtime in order to run the class file that's created after we do the compile process.